Hey, discussion leaders. Uh, we're in our second week um, on our series through the Psalms for this summer. Um, our discussion groups are pretty straightforward for the most part this week, um, but wanted to give you guys um, a heads up about what we're going to be talking about. And our last question, question number six, uh, is a little more tricky. Um, so I wanted to give you guys some guidance through that. Um, you'll start out with just kind of a catch-all, um, see if anything stood out to students, if they have questions, if they have something they uh, disagreed with. Um, again, we always like to kind of guide discussion uh, towards what they had questions about or were interested on, and so this gives them an opportunity to set the tone um, if they have anything. And then question two and three are really simple, uh, just ways to um, get the conversation flowing. Uh, we're going to be talking this week about urgency and desperation and pleading with God in prayer that we see is characteristic throughout the Psalms. They, they call on God in prayer with a desperation and, and almost like a pleading with him. Uh, to answer their prayers. And so, just like we talked about last week, we're going to be looking at some of the ways that the psalmists pray. And then the, the main question we're going to be asking is, why did they pray like this? What led them to pray this way? And then why do we not really pray this way today? And so, we'll ask and answer that question in our time during the lesson. And then you're asking in question two and three, what are some things that do actually make us urgent and desperate to to plead with God in prayer. Um, and there could be a wide variety of answers there. Those are um, easy questions. Number three is, maybe what are some things that probably should make us urgent um, and desperate in prayer, but they don't really? Uh, what are some things we should probably pray to God more desperately for that we don't find ourselves doing very often? Again, easy, just getting the conversation flowing. Uh, then question number four, can you think of any additional reasons that we don't plead with God very often in prayer, that we don't have this urgent, desperate tone when we go to God in prayer? Uh, the answers that I'll provide in the lesson are uh, the psalmists, I believe, prayed this way because they really saw God as, as sovereign and all-powerful and able to answer their prayers. They expected him to answer. And then secondly is that they kind of rightly interpreted uh, the seriousness and the desperation of the world around them and even what was going on inside their own lives. And so they kind of rightly interpreted uh, their need for God. And so those are the two things that I think led the psalmists to pray like this. And those are two things that could potentially one or the other or even both be absent in our lives that lead us not to pray in a way that's urgent and desperate. But there could be other reasons. That's what this question is getting at. I've listed a couple for you uh, there. Um, and I'm sure there's a couple more outside of that. I think the, the first one I put here is that uh, this may just be me, but I think um, the more urgent and desperate we are when we call to God on prayer, kind of the more stock we're putting in God answering our prayer. It's almost like when we feel like we're calling on God desperately, it's like we're putting all of our marbles into that bucket and puts a lot of pressure on God actually answering. And that goes back to our maybe lack of confidence that God actually will answer. And so we're hesitant to do that, or at least I am. Um, and then another one I put on there is we, we're just, we're really prideful, really self-sufficient. We don't plead with anybody for anything. We can, we can figure it out. We can get stuff done ourselves. And so we don't feel like we need to call on God uh, with kind of an urgent tone. Uh, and I'm sure there's lots of other reasons. Throw that one out, see what they say. Question number five, uh, what is, is the solution to this problem? How can we become uh, a kind of people that call on God more desperately, more urgently, a little bit closer to what the psalmists um, did in their prayers. Uh, we're looking for some practical answers here. Again, there's a wide variety of potential answers um, and solutions. You, you should spend a good deal of time on this question. Uh, this is even trying to get practical steps that you can infuse into your life uh, in the upcoming week to 
change the way that you pray and address God. And so I've listed a couple for you here. Again, I'm sure there are other answers outside of that that our students will think of and that you guys will think of. And so feel free to spend a good amount of time on that question number five. Make sure we go away with some actual application steps. And then question number six is kind of interesting. Um, and I would throw it out there and let your students, hopefully it grabs their attention and interest and let them uh, debate it, give different perspectives, because I'm sure there won't be wide agreement um, on this question because it's a difficult one. It is, uh, do you think that the urgency with which we call on God in prayer actually has an effect on how God hears our prayers? All right, so is there a correlation uh, on how God actually hears and listens to our prayers and the tone, the urgency, the desperation with which we call on him? Again, throw that out, let them debate for a little while, and then you kind of infuse wisdom uh, as is necessary. And I've put down here, I think, all the important ingredients that I would want out there. We certainly don't want uh, people to think that we can twist God's arm and force him into an answer by calling out to him with urgency and desperation, by pleading with him. It's not as if we're forcing God to answer our prayers when we pray this way. Um, and we, we want to make sure people know this is not just a, a conversation about language. We're not just using desperate, urgent language. It's actually the, the emotion uh, behind uh, our prayers. What's going on in our hearts? Is there really desperation and urgency in our hearts? God certainly can't be fooled into thinking we're desperate for him to answer our prayers just because we use language that sounds that way. He sees through that. He sees through our hearts. He knows whether or not we're actually desperate for answers. So we can't fool him that way, certainly. Um, and I've got a little quotation there from Jesus. He says we shouldn't pray like the Gentiles do. They heap up empty phrases. They have these long prayers, and they think that God will answer them because they have many words, uh, because they use long, fancy words. In the same way, we shouldn't think, God is going to answer my prayers if I use um, a tone or language that sounds more desperate. Uh, we're, we're not fooling God in this. So we want to make sure those are out there. But at the same time, I personally can't help but think that this actually does affect the way that God hears our prayer. Um, again, not just our language, not just our tone, but if God actually sees into our hearts that we're desperate and urgent for him to answer, I think it does affect the way that he hears our prayers. Um, and I'm not going to venture into how that is, how that affects it, if it makes an answer more likely, but I think it, he certainly takes that into account. Um, and we can see, I put an example there for you, Hebrews 5, 7, talking about Jesus, says, in the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications, this is an important section, with loud cries and tears, right? So there's the urgency, there's the desperation, there's the pleading with God, uh, and he made these prayers to him who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Um, and so that's a little biblical evidence that God hears our prayers a little bit differently when there's a desperation, when there's an urgency behind them, a legitimate urgency. Um, and then another thing I think could be worth pointing out is that uh, God is our Father. We see that throughout the New Testament. We are His adopted children. We see that throughout the New Testament. And oftentimes there's examples of um, when we pray, it's similar to a child talking to their father. Uh, they draw those parallels in the Gospels a couple of times. And so if you, if you extrapolate that into this situation, which um, I think is appropriate to do, of course, a parent... Uh, listens, it changes how a parent hears what their child is saying when their child is um, desperate, when their child is urgent, when their child is screaming about something, they hear that a lot differently than their, their child quietly calling for them into the next room. Um, and I think the same can be true of, uh, of how we pray to God. He certainly hears our cries differently when there's a real, serious, urgent desperation, not just on our, in our words, not just in our tone, but in our hearts, that we really long for an answer. I think that does change the way that God hears our prayers. And so we can't trick God. This can't just be manufactured. 
urgency. It has to be real. Uh, but when it is, I do think that that affects the way that God listens and hears to our prayer, hears our prayers. So that's an interesting question to end on. You can spend a lot of time there. Um, just remember, don't end that discussion without putting those guardrails up. Let students have at this. If they're interested in it, let them talk back and forth. You don't have to dominate the discussion, but make sure you put up some of those guardrails for them and bring a little bit of wisdom into the discussion as is needed before you close. But um, thank you guys for being willing to volunteer this week. Let me know if you have any questions before Sunday, and I'll see you then.